By 1100, the medieval knight was dressed from head to toe in mail. Mail is really like a metal fabric. It moves and behaves like a cloth, but is actually made of hundreds and thousands of interlocking iron rings. It could turn and deflect a sword blade. As an armor, mail didn't work all by itself. It needed the addition of a padded coat. The coat absorbed the shock of the blow, whilst the mail turned away the cut. Together, they formed an incredibly effective protection. The first stage in making mail was to create wire to the right thickness. To do this, it was pulled through a drawing plate, which had a series of ever smaller holes, until you got wire of the desired gauge. To make the rings, we wind the wire onto a mandrel. And then we take it off the mandrel and cut the rings. So I've flattened the overlapping ends of the ring and I've pierced a hole through it. And now Nick has to put a rivet in it. The basic construction of mail would be a ratio of four to one. So each ring goes through four of its fellows. Here you can see I've made a set of five, which will then be joined to other sets of five to create a sheet of mail. Mail had to be tailored to a perfect fit. It had to be shaped for feet and legs, arms and hands, and of course the head. A skilled mail maker could make very precise shapes. Of course, for more complicated parts of the body, like elbows, we can actually tailor it in two different directions at the same time. Yeah, so if we fold this in half, we have an elbow. One of the main benefits of tailoring in mail was that it meant a knight didn't have to carry a single ring of extra weight that he didn't need to. The mail to cover a knight from head to toe required about 200,000 rings. High status knights would have had their mail edged with gold, but most importantly, it had to be functional. Clad in mail with his shield and helmet, the knight was well equipped to face the weapons of the day.